Welcome to week four of NFL Prime Time. Bledsoe and the Pats are off to their best start in decades. The Bears, their worst. Can Rick Meyer help stop their winless ways? The Jets would like to start a winning streak at home. While the Saints are just hoping they can put it in the end zone. The Lions continue to put their trust in Barry. Brett Favre and the Pack hope to jumpstart their success in the red zone. But would the Vikings come from way back? Elway and the Broncos look to keep the Bengals down at mile high. Can the Chiefs do the same against Collins and the Panthers? Will Captain Comeback bring the Colts back from a dreaded start? We'll get things started up on NFL Primetime next. I tell you what, we have more team speed on this show than you know about. You know these scores are hot off the press. Hi, everybody. I'm Chris Berman along with Tom Jackson and Stuart Scott. And welcome to NFL Primetime Week 4. And I guess there's lots to tell you about. First, let's get you caught up on those late games. And we'll all read these together, all right? The 49ers are all over the Atlanta Falcons. That scored 34-7 to with... About two and a half minutes to go in the game. A couple of touchdown runs by Terry Kirby. A pitcher's duel in St. Louis. The St. Louis Rams lead the Giants 6-3 to three in a game putting back football about 30 years. Five minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Two field goals by Wilkins, the margin thus far. The Indianapolis Colts were all over the Bills at the half, but Buffalo has come back and cut it to 29-23 to with over six minutes to go. Todd Collins to Quinn Early, 44 yards, has gotten to the Bills. Uh, within the six points, the Colts had 26 points in the first half. The Denver Broncos have just scored again, and they have upped their lead at mile high. Look like they're going to go 4-0. They lead the Bengals 38-20, to uh, fourth straight week, 100 yards for Terrell Davis. And a barn burner actually at the Kingdome between the Seahawks and the Lightning Bolts. Uh, under seven, about seven minutes to go in that game. Joey Galloway from Warren Moon in the fourth quarter. And uh, the Seahawks lead the Chargers now 20-19. to 19, And as they say in the business, we shall keep you posted. Mm -hmm. Three games and the New Orleans Aints are back, right? Well, not only are they 0-3, but they committed 19 turnovers. The record of one season by one team is 63, so they're well on their pace. Let's see. First game, five turnovers by the Saints. Second game, six turnovers. Third game, eight turnovers. So how many do they have today against the Lions? 10, 11, 12, a whole dozen beignets? Certainly a loss. That's why they play the games. And here you go. Iron Mike Ditka exploded to his team last week. Were they listening? Well, Barry Sanders, you know what he's going to do. He needs 61 yards to become the sixth player in NFL history to get 12,000 for his career. A good block by a touchdown or field goal, Tommy Bardell. And Sanders gains eight. Scott Mitchell, uh, why don't you just give it to Barry Sanders? He'll throw Hermans more. Eric Allen, one of the guys singled out by Mike Ditka, gets the interception, a 36-yard return. Next drive for the Lions. All right, why don't we start, Tom? What are you going to do? Give the ball to Barry Sanders. Sure. He's going to gain 12 yards. And then, why don't... Oh, no. Scott Mitchell's going to throw. It's tipped by Eric Allen. Intercepted by Anthony. What me worry, Newman. Yeah, but the coverage by Eric Allen. Grady never does commit to the deep threat. Steps up on Herman Moore. Should have intercepted it himself, but tips it to Newman. So the ensuing drive. Keith Schuler, the much maligned Keith Schuler, might be benched if he doesn't do well after this game. Derek Gulliford over the middle for 18 yards and a first down. Then Schuler to pitch to Mario Bates. It's a halfback option. And look at the play by Andre Hastings for the touchdown. Way to get up over the top of the defense and feel the ball away. My goodness, the Saints have the lead 7-0. Barry Sanders, here's some history. Seven yards, and now he's over 12,000 for his career. Ends up with 12,052 and counting. But Mario Bates, it's his day. 74 yards, and Tom, he could go all the way. He's gone. Touchdown, the first rushing touchdown this year for the Saints, 14 to nothing. Yeah, and take a look at here at William Rolfe's spot, uh, spot shadow, and look at the inside backer. He seals the lane so that Mario Bates can take off and go. Mike Giggle looks like he's annoyed. You're up 21-7 at the half. Third quarter, Tommy, Pete Schuler, Randall Hill. Well, once you start getting the running game behind you, you see the play-action fake there. But look at the lack of pressure on Schuler as he's stepping back and throwing. He's starting to get comfortable. And look at the lack of turnovers. 11 straight completions. And he says, I'm not fumbling, I'm scoring. 
They're happy the Lions played like dogs. Great day for Schuler. 15 or 21 for 202 yards. And here's the big number for the New Orleans Saints. Count them. No turnovers as the Saints beat the Lions by the count of 35 to 17. Bates, 162 yards on the day. Two rushing touchdowns. One that he threw for. And Tom, what a role reversal. It's like, okay, Detroit goes in and they become the Saints for an afternoon. Uh, they turned the ball over four times to the Saints with a goose egg. I guess Mike got their attention. Well, Mike got their attention and put that game plan into effect, running the football. The Saints were a team coming into this game that was running the ball for barely over 70 yards a game. Today they get 172, and as I said during the highlight package, all of a sudden you can see the quarterback, he Shuler, begin to get comfortable. You play action pass, we're running the ball well, I now get time to throw. And for the Detroit Lions, maybe for Halloween, maybe Scott Mitchell could dress up as Bobby Ross this year. <laughs> I don't know how you would do that. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't think he, he wants to do it. Yeah. Right? Well, it was not a good day for Mitchell, not a good day for the Lions. Some stats were okay, but in the end... It was a lapper for the New Orleans Saints, who, oddly enough, win before the Bears do. Mm -hmm. Well, when we return, Chiefs and Panthers, Vikings and Pack in a wild one. I was a little nervous. I've given uh, this presentation I don't know how many times. Morning, everyone. Boys and girls, we've got a real treat but today. But this audience. We've got Ellie's father, who's with American Airlines. He's the managing director, automation, electronic enhancements. Mr. Anderson. The last thing I wanted was to come across as Ellie's dad, the, dad, the digit head. Uh, who here has flown in an airplane before? Oh, well, almost everyone. So first we checked out our website. Everybody got to plan their own trip. I want to go lucky. Just like you could at home. He wants to go to London. And our new electronic boarding. And that was a pretty big hit. Now we're just beginning to put the in-seat monitors into the plane. And then I brought out the seats. I felt pretty good. They were as excited about all this as we are. And watching them interact with all this stuff really brought it home for me. I mean, back at the office, we're always thinking about the future. Today, I got to see it. You're a judge at America's most prestigious beer competition. You can't see anything. You can't see the labels. All you've got to go on is taste. So who wins the gold medal for best tasting American premium lager? Original Coors. Close your eyes and taste the one that won for taste. Original Coors. Jumping Jupiter, what is this? The new Sprint store at Radio Shack, George. You could win communications for life. I could win? Let's roll, let's roll. It's the 21st century. Win long distance, mobile phones, accessories. Yes, yes, and yes. Win communications for life. Don't even think about it. The new Sprint store at Radio Shack. You've got questions, we've got answers. Welcome back to NFL Primetime, and what a wild game in Buffalo. The Bills, with Jim Kelly in the house watching, have roared back from a 26-point deficit. The youngster, the rookie Antoine Smith, a one-yard run. We're under five minutes to go, and the Bills have taken the first lead of the day over the Colts, 30-29. to We shall keep you posted. Well, last year, the Carolina Panthers not only won the NFC West and went 12-4, and but they were 9-9 nine for nine at their new home, the Big E. This year, at the Big E, they lost their two preseason games. They lost their home opener to Washington. Today, they were home to Kansas City. All of a sudden, the Big E has become the Big E. -E. <laughs> Derek Thomas sitting on the sidelines. You figure the Kerry Collins and company will be able to move the ball. <laughs> we try to have fun here, do we not? Out of Reggie Tongue's hands into James Hasty's hand. And look at Hasty. Hastily get out of bounds. And then spikes in front of Collins, comes over and says, we're number one to Steve Berline. But Collins hit both Chiefs on that play. Hastings penalized 15 yards of the Chiefs had the ball. Elvis Gerback. Oh, he's such a good receiver. Jack B. Kimball. Jack B. Quick. It's Kimball Anders down the sidelines. Look at Tyrone Poole. Get out of here! Kimball Anders, 55 yards, 7-0 Chiefs. Same score, second quarter, and it's Andre Good moon rising. 
slightly naked Elvis again. They love this at Graceland. Kerback to Ryzen, 18 yards, 14 of the Chiefs. Defensive game plan for the Chiefs begins with taking Wesley Walls away. And our first shot here, it's Donnie Edwards, the linebacker. You see him hug up on him right there. Starts to look back. This is perfect coverage. You look back when the receiver looks back. Then Jerome Woods from the other side, coming from the safety spot. You see Walls looking for a flag. He does not get it. Dom, 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 dom. Trying to plan. Panthers first and goal at the eight. And Fred Lane, not Penny Lane, but a great story. The youngster making the team untouched into the end zone. His first NFL score, and the Panthers down 14 to 7. Third quarter, same score. Collins looking for his bread and butter man, Wesley Wall. But Tommy showed you Donnie Edwards, and he's right there. Yeah. Four pass. Donnie Edwards with the great coverage and then the great hands to make that grab. And it pays off. Marcus Allen, touchdown 21 to 7, Kansas City. Now the Chiefs have scored again to make it 28-7 in the fourth. And now he looks to newly re-sign Mark Carrier. What? 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 It's picked off by Mark McMillan and White. He's down the sideline. Cut! Go! All the way! 62 yards! The Chiefs up 35-7. And Carolina gave up only 13 points in the second half at home all last year. They gave up 21 to the Chiefs here. Troy Dumas nails Collins from the blind side. Ball loose. Helmet loose. Game loose. Game gone. Chiefs 35, the Panthers 14. Five times the Chiefs sacked Collins. Four times they picked him off. Carolina just, Tommy, looked a little bit lost in Kansas City. Got some good play from some guys we weren't sure they could yeah, do that. Yeah, offensive, offensive tackles Jeff Criswell and Glenn Parker. Again, a good job today working in space against the Carolina linebackers outside. And with Johnson, Bianca Batu, and Fred Lane scoring a touchdown, it's not the sign they want. It right? translates into pressure on Kerry Collins. Panthers, a puzzling performance, and the Chiefs are now 3-1. and one. As we go inside the numbers... You know how good they were last year at the Big E. We talked about it, 9-0, including that playoff win. But today, with Elvis Gerback and company scoring the 21 points, and how about a fellow named Richardson scoring in the Big E in the team owned by Mr. Jerry Richardson. At any rate, last year, 97 points allowed all year long in those nine games. This year, in the two losses, the Panthers have allowed 59 points at home and have already almost allowed as many offensive touchdowns in two games as they did all last year. Inside the Numbers is brought to you by Visa, the official card of the NFL. It's everywhere you want to be. www.visa.com When we return, Ravens and Oilers. Would anyone show up, including the Oilers in Tennessee? Raiders and Jets. A wild one. Jeff George and Jim Brown again on it. Cleveland Brown Stadium. Hey, and this is your family room. The new stadium has large, comfortable seats. So this is your family room. The stadium has food. Your family room has a uh, uh, food. The stadium puts you right into the action. So does your family room. Hey, boy. If you get your permanent seat license application in the mail by October 6th, you can get a seat in this stadium. After October 6th, you may never have a chance to buy Brown's PSLs at these prices again. You will, however, get to keep your family room. And can I have your dog, though? Very nice dog. It's a ground and air assault on ESPN2. At 12.30, running backs take center stage. The Hawkeyes Tavian Banks hits holes with the speed of a sprinter. Touchdown! Now he duels with power back Robert Holcomb and the fighting Illini in Champaign. Then at 9, it'll be an air show in the WAC when San Diego State and their explosive receiver, Oz Akeem, invade Air Force. Iowa, Illinois at 12.30, San Diego State Air Force at 9, Saturday on ESPN2. Well, let's see now. Two years ago, if they played this game, it would be the Cleveland Browns or the Houston Oilers, right? Stuart, Tommy, this year they play it. It's the Baltimore Ravens at the Tennessee Tuxedos. Well, 
If they only get, like, what, 13,000, 15,000? We have more for the Whalers. I tell you what, next year it's going to be Baltimore and Hartford if those fans get I did some mileage. What's going on here? 958 miles Cleveland to Baltimore and Houston, Memphis. 1293 if you count Baltimore to Hartford. And who knows where else we're going? You never know. Nova Scotia. <laughs> you just never know. Ravens. Passing game. Doesn't even sound right, but tight end Eric Green, who says, me, one-on-one -on -one with anybody is a mismatch. 14 catches this year, one short of his output all of last year. One wide out, Derek Alexander, at least one touchdown grab in eight of the last 15 games. The other wide out, <laughs> Michael Jackson, at least one touchdown grab in 12 of the last 17 games. In fact, Michael averages a touchdown catch every six receptions. Tops in football among all guys with at least 200 grabs. Tennessee, Houston, Nova Scotia, whatever. Look out. Hey, lots of people dressed up as empty seats. 17, oh. 737. Out. Eddie George came in averaging a buck 61 a game. He got nothing, TJ. Yeah, you see him at the line of scrimmage here, and a great job by the Ravens of getting their show, getting on the right shoulders defensively. Playing some two gap on the weak side. And you see Eddie George here the last time. He's just not able to get going and use that combination of speed and power that he has. Just 10 carries, 40 yards. Second quarter, Oilers up 7-3. Steve McNair picked clean by Jamie Sharper. Jamie turns into Mr. Lateral, but everything worked in Baltimore's way. They recover this. McNair himself three turnovers in the game. They convert. Vinny breaking off some real profit of Derek Alexander. Schools to Moore Barnes, 25 yards. Vinny, his 22nd career, 300-yard passing game. And then, TJ, <laughs> Michael Jackson, one glove. Well, maybe two gloves. He had four catches, 73 yards in the game. Two plays later, Alexander takes Barnes to school again. His second touchdown of the day, 14th of his career, 17-7 Ravens. Late third quarter, Derek Mason. Fair catch. I got it. I, I dug. A week after his 500th career reception, Ernest Biner recovers for Baltimore and led to a field goal. Fourth quarter, Ravens up 23-10. Vinny to Jermaine Lewis. Jermaine just blowing up. The ACC's all-time leading receiver. Five catches all of last year. Eight in this game, TJ. Lewis, a great job of looking over the shoulder. Find, watch the drag right there. Drags both his feet and bounds. That's a great catch. And Steve, Steve McNair right here. TJ, what? Well, what? at some point, you got to throw the ball. At some point, you great job of making, but you got to throw the ball. He looked pretty. He got nothing. College football's all-time total yardage leader, dumped. The Oilers, five turnovers. Ravens converted those five turnovers into 19 points. They won it 36 to 10. After never winning on the road, the Ravens have now won two straight on the road. Says Derek Alexander, last year we wanted to win, but th didn't think we could win. This year we think we can win, and we're playing that way. Vinny, 23 of 37, 318, three touchdown passes for Vinny. Testimony. I know NFL football is new in Tennessee, but, you know, if the fans don't want to go out, we'll right. take the team somewhere else. That's right. Uh, all right? Can we... It's NFL football. <laughs> go to the game. All right? It's not that hard to understand. 17,000 in September? That's a disgrace. We, a little, we commentary. Out, a little commentary here. These opinions do not necessarily reflect the management of ESPN. <laughs> all right, where were we? Raiders and the Jets. 29 years ago was Heidi. But here's another number. 700 days ago, or 100 weeks ago, which, by the way, Noah's Ark could have sailed 17 times in 40 days and 40 nights, was the last time the New York football Jets won a home game at the Meadowlands. 13 straight losses. They're playing the Raiders today. Perhaps it was time for the do theory. I mean, they had to be do, didn't they? Well, Bill Parcells is saying, I wasn't here for all this stuff. Don't bother me. First quarter, Napoleon Kaufman. No little man complex here. He's as big as they come. Takes his hand out of the vest. Makes a nice move. A cut back against the grain. Shakes a tackle. He had 110 yards rushing time in the first half. Three plays later, Jeff George to James Jett, who is a guy that fits his name. He's a Whoa! pass. Otis Smith. It's a touchdown, 56 yards. Raiders lead at 6-0, and on the extra point, Cole Ford, just remember that, he missed it, it was a recurring theme, but Tom, back to the touchdown. Well, James Jett on the go pattern, and you see there's not a whole lot of movement right here, and Otis Smith just doesn't get turned in time. I guess he runs faster than Otis. Yes, he does, and then, Tommy, here we go, Timmy Brown. Timmy Brown with the out and up, I guess he's a little bit trickier than Otis. <laughs> now, they try for the two-point conversion after the touchdown, missed it, so that one extra point leads to... Two points missed. It's 12 to 3 rated. Jets have scored to make a 12 10. But look at George. Jet! Sung by Wings, and he wings his way into the end zone pass. Oh, Otis again. Jeff George in the first half, close to 200 yards. You throw the three touchdowns. 22 to 10, the Raiders at the half. Ford missed the field goal at the end of the half. 
All those tricky jets. To Brian Hansen on a fake punt to Corwin Brown gets a big block from Fred Baxter and helps him wrestle his way instead of a field goal, make it 22 to 16. Raiders come back. George, the Jet. Woo! Into Jet territory. Jet, J E T T, Jet, Jet, Jet. Had five catches for a buck 48. That sets up a field goal attempt for X Raider kicker Cole Ford. <laughs> Blocked by Corwin Brown. Ray Slim Mickens picks it up. He starts. Go. Oh, the way. Special teams packed down again by the Jets. 23 to 22 Jets. To the chagrin of Al. To the amazement of Joe Bugle. To the delight of although he never shows it, to Bill Parcells. Tom, what happened? There's a great push by the entire defensive line and a great grab by Mickens to get that football and head down the field. But you saw that line surge, get through, and create an area where they could get their hands up and make the block. Well, Bill, go, don't give me more cord. I want to keep you. Give me more cord. I want to follow. That's enough. I got the touchdown late in the fourth quarter. Cole Ford, a chance to win. A tough field goal, though, in defense of him, 47 yards. But guess what? Missed an extra point. He missed three field goals. Al... Uh oh, we're going down hard. Ford looking like an Edsel. Jets on fourth and seven with just over a minute to play. Neil O'Donnell, instead of kicking the field goal to go up by four, a bizarre play, but it looks good in the score sheet. The flip to Adrian Morrell. The Jets run out the clock there, two and two, and the Raiders bring up all those numbers. And what great offensive numbers they have. They lose it 23 to 22, despite the fact they outgain the Jets. 468 yards to 303. And Tommy, let's go Jets' perspective first. What will Bill see? Uh, I mean, he'll see a win, but what else? Well, I think a great way to judge Bill Parcells' teams is by his special teams, and, and you can see how he's advancing through the first quarter of the football season. We've seen them uh, return a kickoff for a touchdown. We saw him last week against the Patriots with a, 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 a field a fumble caused mm -hmm. on, a, on a, a return of a, a kickoff, so they had a chance to win the game. And then today they blocked a field goal, return it for a touchdown, which leads directly to a win. So I think that you can see that the team is progressing if you read that team through their special team. Well, think about this now. Timmy Brown, 10 catches, buck 53. Mm -hmm. Jet, 5 catches, 148. Kaufman, 126 yards rushing. Jeff George, 26 to 38 for 374. They lose? Yeah, I, I think that the, the, the turnovers and the mistakes are critical situations because you're not going to often be able to say that we had 200-yard receivers, we had a 100-yard rusher, we had a quarterback who threw for over 300 yards and we still lost the football game. So mistakes are critical situations where you turn the ball over, where you have that offside, where you have a false start. Those are the things that are killing the Raiders. Well, as we go inside the numbers, Tommy, you can see that the Raiders are 1-3, in three, but they've led all four games at the half. They led by one at Tennessee to lose in overtime. They led by 14 on the Monday night against the Chiefs to lose at the gun. They led uh, Atlanta by seven points, and they end up winning it by five. And they led the Jets today, 22 to 10, to lose it by one. Long flight home from New York to the West Coast. When we return, the Bears and the Patriots, the Pats go 4-0, and could the Bears avoid 0-4? Bengals and Broncos, speaking of 4-0, would it be Denver's day again? Green Bay is a small town. When someone leaves here, it means something. It means the entire community has been diminished. It means an acquaintance, a neighbor, a friend left your life forever. Most importantly, it means there's now some extra seats available. For Sunday's game. Well, it's awfully tough to get tickets from the Super Bowl champs. It's absolutely impossible with American Express. So bring your Visa card. Go Packer, the official card of the NFL. The Michelin X1, with a six-year, unlimited mileage Treb Life warranty, gives you better wet traction than any rain tire, plus Michelin confidence in most driving conditions. Because you don't just cover a lot of miles, you cover a lot of weather. I-24, oh, 73, I-16. Bingo! I got bingo! <laughs> Get real. Logo Athletic, authentic team apparel. Ready for the next game? Hey, did you see Rocket last night? That was classic carnage. Absolutely great. You know what I liked about him? Nothing fancy comes right at you. Chicken, please. And then when he's got all his pitches working, you can just forget about it. Unstoppable. I'll have the chicken, too, please. Can you just uh, put the biscuit in the basket? Biscuit in the basket. Biscuit in the basket. Biscuit in the basket. Biscuit in the basket. Oh, damn. I thought I was over key. I thought it just ordered the cornbread. None of this would have happened. I know. 
Welcome back to primetime. The Bears and the Patriots. Rick Meyer making his first start for Chicago. He was drafted two in 1993. Drew Bledsoe drafted one by the Patriots. Meyer then a Seahawk. They renew acquaintances today. It's uh, interesting that their paths would cross again, and Larry Wiggum made sure that his pass crossed with Meyer, sacking him twice in the game. This one for a 15-yard loss. First drive for the Pats. Bears outside the free play. Ben Winter Coates makes a move, makes another move, makes another move. He's down to the 14-yard line. Then Drew Bledsoe to Vincent Ultimate Frisbee. Touchdown, 7 yards, 7-0 seven Patriots. And Tommy... Dave Watts not got over Alonzo Spellman, but he played a big game. Well, watch him take down Curtis Martin here with just one arm, big paw on him. He has the biggest guns we'll see in this league. Tell you what, for a while, the Patriots had real trouble running. Here's Meggett. Yeah, Dave Meggett again trying to... And you see that nice, collapsing, swarming defense by the Bears, and that's what was going on early on. And then Drew Bledsoe here trying to make a change at the line of scrimmage, but you see this package is more people coming than they can block. He finally calls timeout. After a Bears interception, Rick Meyer... It's going to hair one out to Ricky Prohl Shampoo. But Ty Law gets it because they fought the law and the law won. Law makes the interception. Net passing for Meyer and the Bears in the first half, minus two. Not good. Suing drive. Bledsoe, he really likes Troy Brown and his band of renown. Blast through the defense. He's got Jets, and you saw it. 52 yards, 14-0 P-Men. Yeah, and it begins with James Burton in the middle of the field taking a bad angle for the tackle right there. And once he misses, now the receiver has a lane to the end zone. 14-0 Patriots at the half. Third quarter, Meyer gets warmed up a little bit. He's looking for his tight end who's made some big plays the last few years. Ryan Wetnight on a third down, and he gets into Patriot territory. Then Meyer does what he does best. We talked about it on Countdown this morning. He scrambles, he moves, he creates, and it sets up a field goal, 14-3. Jager kicked the field goal. Bledsoe back to Troy Brown. Left flat, makes a move. God, he's got Chet. 20 yards, six catches for a buck 24. Brown playing because Glenn was out. Watch this. Bang, the whistle blew. Oh, no! Tom Tupelo, honey, gets his hand booted by Adam Vinatieri, like Lucy and Charlie Brown. Fourth quarter, Curtis, my favorite, Martin, having a tough day until he runs this 70 yards, but watch the end, Tom. Yeah, what a great job here by Spellman. Look at this big man. Keep hustling down the field. It's a touchdown, but credit uh, uh, Spellman with great yeah, hustle on that great play. Great hustle today. 24-3, to three, Todd Sauerbrunn. This is the Bears' season. It's a seven-yard punt. That directional punting, unfortunately, went seven yards out of bounds. Eesh. Bledsoe and Meyer talk afterwards. Well, Drew's had a little more success than uh, Rick has had thus far in their careers in their fifth year. The Patriots go 4-0. They haven't done this in 74. They beat the Bears by the count of 31-3. Patriot defense, Tommy, holding the Bears to just nine first downs. Uh, for a while, they, they didn't really run very well, but um, they were worried about a possible letdown after Tuna Bowl won. And, for a while, they looked sluggish, didn't you think? Well, they would have had to have a pretty big letdown to lose to the Bears today. But I, I think what, what you look at with the Patriots is a team hitting on all cylinders, offense, defense, special teams. Now you get a chance to have some time off and wait for that Monday night game two weeks from now. And you can play the Broncos in mile high. And I think they'll be ready for it. Well, that'll be, that'll be a great game. Uh, when we return, uh, we have... Uh well, we have the defending champs. They're having a little trouble scoring in the red zone. Not a lot of trouble scoring today, but neither did the Vikes. There's a wild one at Lambeau. Stay with us because the hits were fast and furious as were the points. Can we enhance performance by simply moving a battery? Is it possible to combine the ease of an automatic with the fun of a manual? Is everyone comfortable with the concept of cab forward design? These are the questions. This is the answer. Dodge Stratus. Starting under 14-4, 18-4 impressively equipped. If you expect your people to start thinking out of the box, they need to stop working in one. Hayworth, furniture for what's next. This guy never complains. Does he make any excuses? I get really tired. I mean, I'm skinny. Does he let any obstacles get in his way? Some of the guys on the other team, they just started hitting me. He just keeps going. Those arms keep pumping. Just be the bunny. Be the bunny. Yeah, that's it, guys. 
Saturdays, the action kicks off on campus. Join Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, and Kirk Herbstreet for college football's most complete pregame show, College Game Day, this week live from the University of Michigan, only on ESPN. As we've talked about all weekend on NFL Countdown and certainly the uh, Swami, uh, the one thing that Mike Holmgren has had trouble with in the NFC Central, he certainly had trouble with the rest of the division, 26-7 against everybody except the Minnesota Vikings, against whom he and the Packers are 3-7. There are really just two skeletons left in the Packers' closet, despite the Super Bowl last year. One's Dallas, you'll see him in November, and two, the Minnesota Vikings. The Vikings were in town today at Lambeau Field. Brett Favre with 151 career touchdown passes needs two to pass. Bart Starr for the Packer record. First quarter, Minnesota scored right away to make it 7-0, but Favre to Robert Brooks, touchdown. And so number 152 for Favre. Brooks is in the stands, and Favre is in the Packer record book. It's 7-7. Still in the first quarter. Minnesota, though, boy, they can strike. Robert Smith had a big game last year in a win over Green Bay. Let's get him go! Kurt, go all the way! Except they rule him out of bounds, Tom. Well, a couple of things that happened here. Eugene Robinson in perfect position to make a play, but the umpire, Jeff Rice, and this happens sometimes, is going to throw maybe the best block on that play. And then as we look further down the football field, you're going to see a good call by the referee right there. Smith stepped out of bound on about the 7 or 8-yard line. Well, the Vikings, though, inside the 6, they don't even get any points. Davis misses the field goal. Remember that point in the game. Vikings thought they'd have the lead, but it's still 7-7. Seven, seven. So second quarter, far to Antonio Freeman. 28 yards, 14-7 pack. Favre has the record passing the Hall of Famer Bart Starr. Two plays after an INT by Leroy Butler. Favre to Freeman. Again, 15 yards, 21-7 the pack. Favre would throw another touchdown on the half, 31-7 at the half. But opening play in the third quarter, the kickoff. Bill Schrader's had a good start, but not here. It's a fumble. Harold Morrow causes it. The Vikings recover. Brad Johnson, Chris Carter. All he does is catch touchdown. Three yards, 31 to 14. No problem yet for the pack, right? No. A man named Brady, Jeff Tipton, Jason Fisk. Punch makes the interception. And two plays later. Watch you to watch this throw by Johnson, the catch by Jake Reed. What a great throw, and what a great job of knowing where you are. Jake Reed getting those feet down. And they got a two-point conversion, make it 31 to 22. Now, far. Antonio Freeman with seven catches for a buck 22. Far. Play action. Gonna surprise and go to the fullback, William Henderson. That gets him down inside the 15-yard line. A couple of plays later. Haven't seen this for two seasons. Far. To Chewy, Mark Chamora, touchdown, 38-22, packed by 16 at the end of three. But look at Brad Johnson to Jake Reed. Look at the throw and the catch, 27 yards. Johnson completed his first 13 passes of the second half, 38-32. Far avoids the rush, but he's tripped by Quain Rudd. Kip Brady hits him late. They were looking for a flag, didn't get one. But the pack forced the punt. 2.15 to go, Johnson. Oh, my God, he put it right into Andrew Glover, Tommy. Dennis Green. Hoping that they could rally. A big rally. Under two minutes to go. Fourth down. Incomplete. And then... Reggie White right here going around Corey Stringer. And look at the end of this play. Yes, he knocks the ball away, but doesn't give the ref a chance to call a penalty. Just bats the ball. Not over yet if the Vikings defense can stop the pack. On third and seven, they get a pass interference call on Corey Fuller. And meanwhile, Brett took a shot from John Randall. Brett was game. Oh, by the way, he had five touchdown passes. Not a horrible day at the office. And the Pack with a huge lead. The Vikes come roaring back, but the Packers go to 3-1, and one, pending the Bucks game on Sunday night. The Packers beat the Vikings by the count of 38-22. to 22. And you know, Tommy, where do we get started on this one? Well, first of all, you went up to Green Bay this week and talked about uh, Green Bay in the red zone. Just a moment. That, that Minnesota in the red zone, I know there were lots of points after that, but that took momentum away from them for about a half. But the Pack inside the red zone... Seemed like they were on the same well, and, page. And the surprising thing about it is that you really didn't see Brett Favre change his style. I mm -hmm. talked a little bit this morning about him throwing to the backs on the outside, but you saw him again focus down the football field and get Chewy involved and get the flanker involved and get the split in involved. Uh, so he's going to do what he does best, and that's throw the ball into the end zone. I think, though, if you're the world champions, you always walk away from a football game saying, what can we do better? And certainly they have questions defensively, along with the injuries that they've had. They, we now see their vulnerability 
vulnerable to a couple of things. Number one, the run game. And to, today, we saw Brad Johnson do a pretty good job of picking them apart at times via the passing game. Well, it was a wild, wild yes. Brad Johnson throwing yes, very far like well. passes. Yes. But Brett Favre was Brett Favre as they got the five touchdown passes and the Pack win a wild game. And so Favre has now surpassed Bart Starr in, well, less than half the games. Of course, the, the way they play the game is a lot different now. Plus, I think Starr had a guy named Horning and another guy named Taylor that he might as well hand the ball to. But Brett Favre in the Packer record book. When we return, Giants, Rams. Did anybody score? I tell you where they could score, the Colts and the Bills. A wild, wild one in Buffalo. Do I like to shop? Oh, yeah. How you doing? Franks and beans, aisle five. Beans and franks, aisle seven. Hi. Hi. That's free. Nothing but car. Check this out. You are one million shopper. Even at the supermarket, you can do more with the American Express card. I love this card. This is Mad 98 talking smart D. Who do you love, coach? The guys who can sniff out a quarterback. Yeah, zoning, dropping, <laughs> snorting out the scent of fear. The greats have good smellers on them. And boom, they act like a unit. Liquid D, baby. You have the sniffer, you have the smeller, then you go get what you just smell. You know, this way you have that smeller for You can run, but the hoons will find you. Light them up, people. We're talking trains with brains. Madden NFL 98, the ultimate judge. EA Sports. It's in the game. I needed a little tune-up before heading to camp, so I decided to look up some of the fastest guys in the game, thinking we could run some drills. Gee, Mr. Naaman, I'm sure my dad would love to come over and play. But it would just be two-hand touch, right? Wow. You're still alive? Unfortunately, I couldn't find any of their numbers. So I put on my new low-to-the-ground Zoom Air shoes and went out back with some of the neighborhood kids. Still got a few bullets left in the old gun. At the top of the hour, Mike Piazza and the Dodgers know the Giants have won. They got to beat the Rockies to stay within one in the NL West. Rockies, Dodgers, Chavez Ravine, top of the hour. NFL Prime Monday with Mike and the gang at 7.30 Eastern Time Monday night. Backstage with Cordell Stewart. We get set for the Steelers at the Jacksonville Jaguars. And on ABC at 9 Eastern, the first visit ever of Monday Night Football to Jacksonville. The undefeated Jags take on their division rival Steelers. That's Monday night at 9 Eastern. When we return, Chargers and Seahawks in a tight one out west. Warren Moon leads the Seahawks to another win. Bengals and Broncos. The Bengals score with Denver. We know the 49ers could score. They usually do against the Falcons. Would it be more of the same at the stick? beats a Meyer snowplow installed by the experts, Great Lakes Truck Equipment. As the world's largest distributor of Meyer snowplows, you can depend on Great Lakes Truck Equipment for factory trained technicians, utilizing only genuine Meyer parts, 24-hour day service when it snows, and with pre-approved vehicles, 24-hour installation on new Meyer snowplows. So see the experts in snow and ice control, the name you've trusted for over 20 years, Great Lakes Truck Equipment. And mention this ad for a Meyer jacket free with pre-approved installations. Man, those fat boys need to step up and make a difference. No bat boys, no bats. No bat? Let's just say the offense will suffer. One of the Marlins ball girls is smoking. For the playoffs, a super spitball. Holy cow! Someone trips on a bat, and I got the whole city of Atlanta on my butt. We don't actually bat, but we do set the tone for the organization. Well, if summer is going to end on this day, we might as well end with a full sweat. Uh, San Francisco Giants, 
New York football giants. Chances are the football team would score more than San Francisco, <laughs> but you never know. Let's see what you happens. You never know. Hey, you can call this the sentimental bowl. The last time the Giants played a game in St. Louis, it was the St. Louis Cardinals last game in the Gateway City, 1987. The last game Dick Vermeil coached before he retired in 1982 was against the Giants. G-Men meet the Rams. Dick meet the G-Men. Actually, Dick, why don't you tell you guys to protect the ball a little better? Rams last 31 games, 90 turnovers. Both teams one and two. You can guess what? Hey, sign up Ozzy. Ozzy can return some punts, huh? First play of the game, Dave Brown, who went to Duke. Academic man, not a smart play. Decked after a seven-yard run. TJ. Well, take a look into the pileup, and we're going to see a little spot shadow here, and you're going to see Keith Lyle. There's Danny as Dave Brown. As Dave Brown breaks the huddle right here, he starts to go through and watch his head because right there at the end he takes a shot right there from Keith Lyle and he'd be off to the side. Brown will return later on Canal. You saw him warming up on his second play. Kevin Carter and Bill Johnson rock his well. DeMarco Farr eventually comes up with it. Rams football. You talk about momentum? I don't think so. Fourth and inches. Lawrence Phillips didn't get there. Giants and Rams each only one first down in the first quarter. Next possession. Tiki Barber. A touchdown in each of his first three games. Popped by Toby Wright. Ball came loose. TJ. You don't get stuck. many like this. Toby Wright just comes up and turns Tiki Barber the other way, and Tiki Barber would go off the field. <laughs> Second quarter, no score. Rams driving. Tony Banks finds tight end. Ernie Conwell in the end zone, right? Touchdown, right? <clears throat> Flag on the play. Illegal formation. Rams forced to settle for a field goal. Six zip at the break. Late fourth. Giants down 6-3. Dave Brown rolling out. Throws in the run. Picked by Toby Wright, but he's ruled out of bounds. Still Giants ball. Two plays later, third and seven. Brown, Chris Calloway open. Is it going to be a hottie hottie? No. Ryan McNeil broke it up. The ball just floated up there. Then Craig, Ironhead, Haywood, no butter because it's not smooth, just straight. Booyah. 34th career touchdown for Ironhead. Rams win it. 13 to 3. Oh, heck of a game. All right, maybe not. Brad DeLuisa, a 49 yard field goal, but he also missed two field goals. LP Lawrence Phillips, 23 carries, 72 yards. Brown, 16 of 31, 163 yards. Chargers and Seahawks. Here we go, second quarter, score tight at three. Seattle driving, Warren Moon trying to be a player, but Rodney Harrison is a player hater. Rodney leading the team in tackles coming in. Voted team defensive MVP last year. Peace, 11th career interception. Took it 75 yards for the touchdown. TJ, heck of a play. Well, great read and break. You see him lined up back. He starts right in as if he knows the play, and he just makes a great break on the football. That's a great play by Rodney Harrison. Chargers get the ball back to the Seattle three. Humphreys to Metcalf. Official says he did not get in. Things that make you go... Hmm, TJ. Well, this will make us go, mm, because not only does Metcalf seem to catch the ball, but he also gets it right over the pylon right there. Probably should have been a touchdown. Even Dennis Erickson was like, oh, all right, really? All right, we'll take it. Fast forward to the fourth quarter. Seahawks in midfield, down 19-13. Moon hooking up with Joey Galloway. I'm feeling you, Joey. He had 17 touchdowns his first two years in the league. This is his first touchdown of this season. Seahawks a one-point lead. Chargers get the ball back. Humphrey's looking over the middle. Daryl Williams ought to be arrested for larceny. Three picks on the day. He's got 17 for his career. Humphrey's needed a hug. But four plays later, Warren Moon <coughs> coughed up the ball. The Chargers would recover. It would lead to a field goal. They're up 22-20. Back come the Seahawks. First and 10, their own 30. Warren to Galloway, the former Ohio State star for 12. Two plays later, all oh, Galloway did the stutter step, froze the DB. Taron Shaw could only hold him, pass interference. Five plays later, Steve Broussard up the middle, down to the one. Next play, Broussard said went up, Broussard went up high. Serious hop, Seahawks score 26-22. They hold off the Chargers and take it. Joey Galloway, huge, five catches, 106 yards and a touchdown, he was the bomb. Those three interceptions by Darrell Williams, it is a Seattle Seahawks record. Warren Moon, two touchdown passes, two interceptions on the day. And the other final, San Francisco Giants eight, New York Giants three. So uh, the, <laughs> the football team needs some more home runs. Please. They need some more home runs. Barry well, needs to play like DB or something. Yes. Well, we got some teams that scored some home runs here today, and wait to see the last game uh, of the day. But... Let's start with the 3-0 Denver Broncos. We're at home against the Cincinnati Bengals, a team they had beaten six straight times. In fact, the last time they lost to the Bengals, they don't play them every year, but last loss to Cincy was 1975. 1975. 
They had a third-year linebacker named Tom Jackson. You know what? Back then, he was truly tiny, <laughs> weren't you? Here we go. <laughs> Late first quarter. Jeff Blake and the Bengals driving. First and goal at the eight-yard line. Blake rolls. Oh, what a pretty play to Tony McGee, the reverse pass. Yeah, and this is called tight end fall stall for obvious reasons. You're going to see right here, at the, look at him spot shadowed right there. The tight end falls down, and as everything moves to the right, he comes back across the formation, and if you're a linebacker, very difficult to keep track of where he is. So John Elway says he stumbled a little bit early, but an easy Ed McCaffrey. With this one, Elway passes Fran Tarkins in second place on the all-time completion list. 3,687. Then Elway says, all right, Ed, go farther down the field. Right there. Touchdown. 32 yards. Everybody does the salute. And then look at this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're tied at seven. Next, Denver drive. The Broncos hung on the ground with Terrell Davis. And why not? He's had 100 yards rushing each of the first three games. The ground caused the fumble. Keep the ball. Gain of 15. Davis up the middle. What? Oh, very Emerson Boozer-like for 11 yards. Same drive. Third and goal from the one. Elway. Rod Smith, both right, 14-7 Denver at the half. First play from scrimmage, third quarter. Kajana Carter, is he back? Yeah, I guess so. Makes a move, and he could go all the way. 79 yards, touchdown Cincinnati. Great job by the offensive line, feeling to the backside, and look at the vision by Kajana Carter. And this is the way we remember Kajana Carter, the guy who can take it all the way. First time he's gotten 100 yards since the Rose Bowl. The end of his college career, we're tied to 14. Elway to Rod Smith. A diving grab at the touchdown. 21-17 at this point. Now, it's another field goal, so it's just 21-20 to Denver. Terrell Davis up the middle, shakes one tackle, shakes and bakes, cooks. Goes, scores, 50 yards, 28 to 20. Terrell Davis is over 200 yards. That's never happened in Denver history. 31 to 20. Jeff Blake, sacked by Neil Smith. Alfred Williams contributing. Gone. Rumbling, bumbling, stumbling. 51 yards and a dive. We salute. We dive. We hold our heads to Jeff Blake. You look up at the scoreboard and see, hey, man, I really did that. 38 to 20, the Broncos over the Bengals. The 215 yards by Terrell Davis to four games gives him 426 yards. Three touchdown passes for John Elway, although he threw for under 200 yards. All right, the Niners at home against the Falcons. The team that had candlestick, they usually torch. Rod Woodson, not in uniform, giving instructions. Tyrone Draper, Darnell Walker, playing DB. First quarter, Steve Young buys some time. Rolls right to Garrison. First, I look at the hearse. He's into the infield. He's going to the pitcher's mound. And he's tackled inside the five. Third and goal. Young. Look for number 83, J.J. Stokes. Stokes drops the ball. Pretty good coverage. They have to settle for a field goal. 3 nothing Niners. It's that way in the second quarter. Young. Buys some time again. Looks left. Looks right. Rolls right to William Floyd into Atlanta territory, 21 yards. Then Young says, you know what? Maybe we can use this William Floyd again. And look at him. He's worked so hard to come back from knee surgery. 17 yards inside the Atlanta 10. That sets up Young. J.J. Stokes. Post. Short post batter, 10 nothing Niners. Yeah, we're going to see the spot shadow here on William White. Now, you watch what he does at the safety spot. He goes inside with Brent Jones, and you see the, the lane created behind him. He turned just a little bit too late. That's just 10 nothing still second quarter, but now Young says, hmm, I've used Floyd. Let's use J.J. Stokes on the crossing batter. Could he get it in there? Almost down to the one-yard line. That sets up a touchdown by Terry Kirby, Steve Mariucci, Jerry Rice. There's some big words for J.J. Way to go, young fella. Late second quarter. Two-minute offense for the Niners, 17-0. Young to William Floyd. Remember, they're in the shadow of their own goalpost, seven yards. Young, Floyd, 11 yards. A big game by Floyd. Then Young, Floyd, six catches in the first half. Goes for 12. Young, so reliable, Brent Jones. Then Young says, forget this short stuff. Let's air it. Terrell Owens. 56 yards, 24 nothing Niners at the half. First half for Steve Young, almost 300 yards alone, and the two touchdowns. And Owens, to Jerry Rice has been such an inspiration to him, hands Jerry the game ball. It's not the first one he's gotten, it's not the 100th one he's gotten, or a <laughs> touchdown ball, but at any rate, a real nice gesture. Billy Joe Tolliver, 
Well, he went to jump off the Tallahatchie Bridge as he dumps it off to Harold Green. Kenny Norton stops him. 24-0 Niners in the third. Terry Kirby, Bobby, weaving, scoring, 15 yards. He had two touchdowns. Young ends up throwing for 336 yards. The Niners beat Atlanta by the count of 34-7 as um, they up their mark to 3-1. and one. Heading into the big Monday night game at Stumbling Carolina next week, and the Falcons are 0-4. Well, and certainly, and, and certainly, I think that when you, when you look at the, the set of games that we saw, we saw certain teams apply themselves with the running game, and the Broncos in particular. I think when John Elway started today, he started two of seven or two of nine. But when you have Terrell Davis as that stabilizing force, he's not going to get 215 yards obviously every week, but he's going to get his hundred yards every week. He is a warrior, and I say that because he carries the ball every down the same way. He's running to go the distance. Yeah, and, and Denver knows that they have all, uh, everything a working out. A lot of weapons. Speaking about a lot of weapons and a wild one, we've yet to show you Buffalo at home against Indianapolis. That's coming up as prime time rolls on. We also want to dole out our game balls. Uh, there's a chance we may go to Green Bay for one of them. <laughs> Dick, the creator of Miller Lite Advertising, has great news for all football fans. This year, Miller Lite is an official beer sponsor of the NFL. That means that this season will be better than last season. Remember that woman with the huge hair who sat down in front of you while you were trying to watch the game? Well, that's not going to happen this year. Dick says, if you like that, you haven't seen anything yet. Stay tuned. Something big has happened. 1-800-COLLECT has once again revolutionized collect calling. Introducing 10 cents a minute collect calling from 1-800-COLLECT. 10 cents a minute for collect calls every evening and all weekend long. Bigger savings for everyone in America. Whoever thought collect calling could be so cheap. 10 cents a minute from 1-800-COLLECT. Who else? Stephen Greenway came to Bristol to study under linguistics professor Joe Theismann. Stephen, language is power. In Super Bowl 30... What initially attracted Stephen to the school of football was Professor Theismann's years of study and work in the field, from South Bend to RFK Stadium. One yard touchdown pass. He was one of the last quarterbacks who used a single bar face mask, which is brilliant because he could see his environment so much better. Watch it. Ah, stop, Joe! Watch it off, buddy. Primetime Players is brought to you by 1-800-COLLECT, the way we call Collect today. My game ball goes to William Rolfe. He's a great player playing on a team that doesn't win much. Almost all the yards rushing were over his tackle. Game ball for Willie of the Saints. Stewart. Mine goes to Terrell Davis. He got his swerve, his Mac, and his vibe on. 27 carries, 215 yards, career high, team record. He had a touchdown, too. TJ? My game ball goes to the world champs, their quarterback, Brett Favre, 18-31, 266 yards, tied a career high, high five touchdowns. I guess he fixed their red zone problem. Yes, I guess he did. Vote. You can vote for your game ball on ESPN.com. Results on SportsCenter following the Rockies-Dodgers game, Willie Rope, Carol Davis, or Brett Favre. Vote. We vote for one of the wildest games you'll ever see. Colts. Coming up from Buffalo. Something big has happened. 1-800-COLLECT has once again revolutionized collect calling. Introducing 10 cents a minute collect calling from 1-800-COLLECT. 10 cents a minute for collect calls every evening and all weekend long. Bigger savings for everyone in America. Whoever thought collect calling could be so cheap? 10 cents a minute from 1-800-COLLECT. Who else? What would you give to be more confident? What would you give for the knowledge it takes to move with certainty through every business day? Just $3.90 a week brings you the Wall Street Journal. Our personal finance guide and decision maker software is free with your paid 10-week subscription. Call now, 800-443-7400. That's 800-443-7400 for the Wall Street Journal. Riverdance, 
It's sweeping the U.S. with sold-out performances. Now you can experience this symphony of sight and sound for only $19.98. That's a $5 savings. Don't miss your chance for the original Riverdance. It's only $19.98. Order now. Thursday night, two ACC dark horses collide. Bring back Tremaine Stevens is elusive and also a runner that gets outside and he's gone. North Carolina State Wake Forest, Thursday night at 8, only on ESPN. Okay, buckle your seatbelts, the Colts at the Bills. Lenny and Foddy and the Colts have not scored a touchdown offensively this year, nor do they have a win. Colts punt. Mitchell Galloway fumbles. Lamont Warren recovers for the Colts for the Bills special teams usually great, horrible this year. Two plays later, Jim Harbaugh. There it is! They're off the schneid. Aaron Bailey, 10 yards, 7-0 the Colts. First offensive touchdown since Dilger caught one last year. Bills first offensive possession. Todd Collins. Gonna get hit by Tony Bennett. He left the ball in Orchard Park. It's a fumble. John Fina recovers for the Bills. Tony Bennett, a recurring theme. Sacks Collins from behind, Tom. Yeah, and Tony Bennett here working against the tight end, Jay Reemersma, and you see him coming around from the top of the screen and doing a great job of getting his hands out and putting Collins on the ground. So one series, two sacks for Bennett, but they came into the game with only two sacks, so already things are changing for the Colts. And Marshall Falk powers his way into the end zone. My goodness, it's 14-0 the Colts in the first quarter. Second quarter. Steve Martin, that crazy guy, hits Collins. It's a fumble. Stephen Grant recovers for the Colts. Led to a field goal. Elijah Alexander hits Collins. It's another fumble. Al Fontenot recovers for the Colts. 26 to nothing after more Blanchard field goals. Now, we're going to miss some, all right? Thurman Thomas on the sidelines. Marv leaving Bill Krell. 29-16, fourth quarter. Antoine Smith, fourth and in inches. Do we get the first down? Yes, they do. Then. Collins. Quinn early. Better late than early. Bills down 29 23. Bills force the Colts to punt. Galloway calls for a fair catch. Scott Vandere hits Galloway. Personal foul 15 yards. A big play. Second and 10 from the Colts 44. Collins, who was horrible early. To early. Flint 43 yards. Down to the one. Robert Blackman knocks him out. First and goal. Bills trail 29-23. The rookie, Antoine Smith. Handoff. Touchdown! 30-29, Bills. Bills take over on down. First play. Smith up the middle. He's gone. 54 yards. 37-29. Buffalo now off by eight after trailing by 26. Cole. Can they mount a comeback with a minute eight to go? Bryce Pop with a late hit. Awful play. Hits Harbaugh. Harbaugh leaves the game. Justin, Paul Justin in for Harbaugh. Pass intended for Marvin Harrison. But Marlon Kerner, pass interference. And so the Colts are inside the five. Third and goal from the two, 19 seconds left. Touchdown, Justin to Harrison. 37-35. Colts trail by two. They got to go for two. Justin looks for Harrison. Fought by Kurt Schultz, but the ref sees nothing. He knows nothing. And Justin says, how can you call nothing? The score is still 37-35. Here's the replay. Well, you take another look at it, and Schultz jumps on him and makes sure he wraps him up before the ball ever gets there. You have to wonder what the official was looking at. Well, they all looked at the ensuing onside kick. A little trickery. A little poocher. And Dedrick Mathis recovers for the Colts. They have a shot. Nine seconds to go at the 48. Do they throw for 30 yards to set up a field goal? No, it's a Hail Mary. Justin, mark, be complete. Two seconds left, just three seconds left. Lindy says, well, now you know what we got to do. Fire it. Just fire it. We're due a Hail Mary, aren't we, say the Colts? Justin throws it up. Ken Irvin intercepts. Oh, and the Bills beat the Colts, stunned, 37 to 35. If you're looking at the record books, the biggest comeback in a regular season from a deficit was 
The 49ers down by 28 points. 1980 gets the Saints, and they win that game. The second biggest comeback from a deficit in the regular season, this one. The Bills trailing by 26 points, they come back to win it. The only one large, it's not a Bills record, however, and it's odd that Jim Kelly was doing the game for NBC as he watched the time they came back from 35-3 in the playoffs once upon a time when Reich led it. This time it's Collins. What a bizarre game. Well, it's mentality, and I think when you, when you see what the Buffalo Bills are capable of, and we've seen it many times over the course of the last decade, they are a ball club that when they are down by 25, 26, 30 or more points, they sit on the sideline and believe we can find a way back. And I think that's the importance when you're down, is mentality. I guess we're ready for the fall. For Stuart <laughs> Scott and Tom Jackson, I'm Chris Berman. Thanks for watching Primetime. Dodgers Rockies baseball coming okay, up. Okay, Chris, now, in its eighth season, it's the ESPN Sunday Night Baseball Game of the Week. Tonight, from Dodger Stadium, the Rockies, led by National League home run leader Larry Walker, take on the Dodgers and slugger Mike Piazza. It's the ESPN Sunday Night Game of the Week. The Dodgers held a two-game lead when they met the Giants this week. On Wednesday, Barry Bonds provided the offense. The Giants closed it within one game. On Thursday, Dusty Baker fired up the crowd. And then Brian Johnson delivered a 12th inning game-winning home run. And the race was even. Friday in San Diego, Bonds homered in his third consecutive game, and the Giants kept the heat on. Meanwhile, the Dodgers saw first place slip away on Hideo Nomo's very wild pitch. Yesterday, the Giants lost. But the Dodgers fell behind the Rockies in the eighth when Mike Piazza could not handle this throw. Then, in the last half of the inning, Piazza's bid for a game-tying home run came up inches short, and the Dodgers lost their fourth in a row. And we're still a game behind. And here's the view at Dodger Stadium on a beautiful night for a ball game. And a huge crowd is gathering. It becomes an almost must win for the Dodgers because the Giants have defeated the Padres 8-5. The Dodgers must win to remain one game out with only five to play for the Giants. Hello, everyone. I'm John Miller. Welcome to Dodger Stadium and the Dodgers.